Hello, I got myself another power supply by Agilent. This one, in fact, is still branded Hewlett Packard. Uh, some time ago, I posted a video repairing another model, which is this 6612C. And this one is 6613C. And the difference is um, output voltage and uh, amps. So this one is uh, 50 volts. 1 amp model and I got it for a reasonable amount of money because uh, it was described as not working uh, powering up but nothing on display and the ground uh, connector is slightly damaged I didn't try to power it up yet because uh, the line voltage is configured at 220 volts and I am in the United States and we have 120 volts here and uh, by the way the seller is also in the United States so I wonder if they did the right thing and uh, tested it through a power converter voltage uh, converter or if not it might be the reason it didn't work for them so, first thing, I think I need to open it up and reconfigure the transformer. So, I took the cover off and I am a bit surprised because according to service manual, this thing is configured for 120 volts AC. And I guess someone at some point reconfigured this thing and didn't change the sticker in the back didn't put any uh, custom sticker or anything like that uh, and uh, by the way these two warranty seals by Excalibur Engineering they were both intact so I guess you can never trust those stickers so since the line voltage is configured properly Let's power the thing up and have a look. All right. Fan came on and indeed nothing on display. So let's try to diagnose this thing a little further. Because I have another unit, now I know how to operate this thing without the display. And by the way, uh, the other unit I repaired, and I will put the link to that video below, if you're interested. Uh, in that uh, unit, the display also happened to be the problem. I found a couple of tantalum capacitors uh, failed on the front um, panel board. So, uh, let's see what um, happens with this unit. First of all, we see 16 millivolts on the output when the output is disabled, and that's a typical thing. I've seen similar thing on the other unit, and I paid attention uh, after that uh, on all the pictures on eBay and everywhere. If you see the unit powered on, uh, it shows about uh, 14, 15. 16 millivolts on the output um, but if I know from the other unit if we enable the output then it drops to almost zero let's try that aha uh -huh. and it dropped to 4 millivolts so now let's see if I can dial up the voltage yes and it goes up and now let's see what the limit is. The limit should be slightly above 50. And there we go, 5116. So the unit seems to work fine, except the display. Naturally, the next step would be to disassemble the front panel and have a look. So I took the front panel apart and uh, these uh, tantalum capacitors which failed in uh, the other unit uh, they look fine in this one 
and let's measure the voltage across them and there is nothing at all so uh, these four caps are in parallel and there is no voltage across them at all so let's turn it off and let's measure resistance across these guys uh, there you go this power rail is shorted and now I need to figure out what's shorting it I took a closer look at this board and here's what I see uh, so these four tantalum caps are all in parallel uh, on the power rail and also is this tiny ceramic capacitor here and it looks burnt uh, and also I see this part, this black part is burnt and there is a crack on top of it in the case and what's bad about that one is that first of all I don't see the marking anymore the marking is gone and uh, second thing is that it's hard to reach it's almost underneath this display so it might uh, take uh, desoldering the display to replace the thing and to figure out what this thing was I will probably need to open up another unit and have a look all right I made some progress here first of all I used my heat gun and removed this capacitor so here it is and look at the power rail it doesn't look shorted anymore but this capacitor is certainly shorted and that's a bit surprising because these uh, ceramic caps don't fail very often and here I opened another unit I have to see what part is here and this one is marked 1R0J and I don't think it's a 1 ohm resistor it's uh, too thick for that it must be an inductor and 1R must mean 1 microhenry so let's grab an LCR meter to make sure so here it is the LCR meter and let's measure this thing there you go one microhenry and let's try the resistance just in case right so it's certainly not one ohm resistor all right uh, using my heat gun with small nozzle i managed to remove this inductor from that inconvenient spot and i even managed to find the replacement in my, my parts bin i salvaged this one from some other board some time ago and it's marked 1R0 and it looks exactly the same size and shape and the LCR meter shows 1 microhenry alright I've done some careful soldering I managed to reach there with my iron and maybe not the best uh, soldering job ever should be good enough and uh, I salvaged the bypass cap from some other board I don't know exactly the value of the part which was here but bypass cap from some other board should work fine here it was one microfarad 
So, hopefully nothing else is wrong, so let's power this thing up. The moment of truth. Ah, look at that. It's working. However, I believe it looks too dim. So, maybe the repair is not complete. I believe we need to check the voltage. The voltage is about 13 volts and I think it's too low. I don't know exactly what it should be, but these are 50 volt capacitors. So I think it should be significantly higher than this. Uh, let's hook up the working module from another unit. So here I hooked up the other module and I don't know if it's visible on camera because of the bright light and no filter but it's significantly brighter than that one. So let's check the voltage here. Uh -huh. So this one is 37.8 volts. So it occurred to me to test this uh, bigger inductor, which is marked 470, which must be 47 microhenry, and this is working unit. Let's test this guy. So 46.6, no problem at all. And look at the not working one. Nineteen. So I believe this bigger inductor is faulty as well. I went for my junk bin and I found this board from an old CD-ROM drive. And here is an inductor marked 470. It's a tiny bit bigger. However, I can at least try. And if it fixes the problem, then I will decide what to do. Uh, go purchase a more suitable one or just leave it like that. So let's try. So I desoldered this thing and it's actually a little lower. Then 47, it measures closer to 40. Well, and I found another one, Axial, which is also 39. So either of those should be good enough to try. So let's try. So here I removed the faulty inductor from the board. And I think I see a tiny burn mark on the bottom. I'm not sure if it's visible on, on camera. Well, anyway, I cleaned the pads with the wick and I cleaned the area with the alcohol. So we are ready to install another one. And this one looks just about the right size. Uh, the contacts are on the corners, so I might need to rotate it a bit so it can hit both pads and this rotation makes it a little wider well i think i can manage to solder it there and um, unfortunately i don't know the current handling capabilities of either of those guys but looking at this guy i think it looks beefy enough for the purpose here is the result of my soldering the replacement inductor just barely fit in there. So let's give it a go. All right. Aha, uh -huh. it certainly looks very much brighter 
this time I'm not sure if it's visible on camera because of pretty bright light here in the lab and reflections from the glass but let's check the voltage uh-huh 37.6 so it looks like a success to me here I put the cover on but didn't fully assemble the thing yet uh, let's do a proper load test so note uh, 17 millivolts still the same thing uh, with output disabled and uh, no load let's connect the load okay and with the load connected still load is disabled the something is connected to the output and output dropped to zero and let's enable the output okay so zero volts zero amps and let's uh, dial in uh, 50 volts and current so default is 10% of the full capacity uh, let's have one amp out and uh, let's dial here one amp and enable the load all right so it's limiting the current because we are right on the edge so <laughs> both instruments are so precise that we are hitting the current limit so let's put the current limit at slightly above let's say one uh, and zero zero uh, three and let's try that there you go no problem at all 50 volts one amp the unit is back together and I put this little sticker here saying 120 volts two and a half amps fuse and by the way I replaced the fuse because uh, there was still a fuse 1.25 amps as if for 220 volts and even if it worked with full load it might have been just barely enough to survive so I put a proper two and a half amps fuse there so mission accomplished thank you very much for watching bye